Welcome back. It's hard to believe, but this is the 50th undulations video. And to celebrate that, I wanted to do something a little bit different. Thought I would share some things that I posted on Instagram for the January event. And this is a thing that took place back in January. I think it happens every January. And uh, it's something that I don't think he invented it, but I believe the YouTuber Cuckoo is a big advocate of it. It's just trying to get people to do as many daily posts as they can during the month of January. And I managed to get one for every day. And so it's uh, just one one minute clip every day during January. That's sort of the goal. And it uh, doesn't seem like a lot, but it was actually quite a bit of effort. And I feel like I learned a lot in the process. I enjoyed it a lot. and. I think that's a good thing to talk about and to share. And I'm not gonna do all of them here, but I'm gonna pick 10 videos, and they're not even really my 10 favorites or what I think of as the 10 best ones, but I think they're maybe 10 that sort of fit in with some of the things I've talked about on the channel. And uh, I hope you go and check out the rest of them, the other 21 on Instagram. And then also make sure to do a search on the hashtag for January because there's a lot of great content done by other people out there and it's definitely worth taking a look at. So let's go ahead and start looking at some of the posts. So first thing we'll look at is jam number two. For this one, I take a little bit of a beat groove on a pocket operator. This is the PO24 office. And I send that out through a impulse speaker. And that's just a speaker that has a little bit more oomph to it, uh, sort of a mechanical thumpiness. I have that on this drum. It's a frame drum called a Boron. It's Irish. and uh, so trying to get a little bit more of a, maybe a little reverb from the drum head. And that is being picked up by this thing, which is the polyphonic whale from Phonic Bloom. And if you don't know about the whale, it's worth sort of looking up. It's got some really cool features and uh, it puts a lot of sort of chordal tones into this. And it's also picking up through the air, the kalimba. And uh, I chose this particular segment of what I recorded because there's a chord or harmony in there that I thought was just really pretty. So I'll try and call your attention to that. Take a listen. <laughs> So this next clip, which was jam number six, is just the Arturia Microbrute no effects. And it's kind of a little bit video gamey. And I guess the main reason I'm including it is to call your attention to the sort of explosion effect at the end of it and just the overall noisiness of it. And the Arturia Microbrute does not have a noise oscillator. So this is just using a patch that I figured out sometime last year and it's pretty cool. And if you want to learn more about it, the Instagram post has got details about how to do it. Take a look.
So this next clip, which was jam number seven, features the Elitone multi-synth. And this is a little synth that I got over the holidays, and it's very cool. Uh, I think I'll do a full video about it at some point. But in the clip, I sent it out through the Nux Atlantic Reverb pedal. It gives it a nice big sound. And an interesting thing about this synth, uh, it's got some inputs and outputs that you can sort of patch, but it's not really exactly CV. It's more like codes that are being sent from the outputs into the inputs. And what I figured out was that I could sort of spoof those signals. I just listened to them and then I thought about how I could try to sort of emulate that with the Basel Castle. And so I have castle signals being sent into this, giving it sort of unusual behavior. And then I'm using the Korg SQ-1 to control the castle. And so it's kind of just a eight step sequence on the SQ-1, but I don't know that it ever actually repeats because there's a lot of like timings and things like that with the Elitone that are going on. Elitone, Elitone. Uh, but anyway, I thought it turned out quite cool. Take a listen. Okay, so this next one was the 10th jam, and I did this one in public, so that was sort of a fun aspect about it. It was at a coffee shop, but the real thing that I want to call your attention to, and this is for people that are into the Volca drum, is that I'm using it to do sort of chord progressions and also have a beat at the same time. And the way I did this, if you think about setting up a sequence of notes, so you can use pitch quantization, just imagine melody on one track, then make a different melody on the second track, and then even another melody on the third track. And so basically you would have a chord sequence. But then by using the step jump feature, you can kind of break out of the sequence of chords and do whatever chords you really want. And so I use the keyboard here as a way to sort of jump back and forth between different chords and make sort of a song. And uh, then using the probability features so that no matter where I'm holding the uh, step jump key down at, you still get kind of a groove, a little bit of a beat, and then uh, even some of them are a little bit different to give kind of some embellishments. Put all of that together and I thought it turned out pretty well. So take a look. So then for jam number 13, I used the PO16, which is the factory pocket operator. 
it's sort of synthesizer based. I didn't really know a lot about it. Uh, I picked it up recently. I like it quite a bit. So that was a good part about this one. But uh, sort of the main thing was taking sound from the Casio Privia and processing it through this. This is the Coma Electronic Field Kit FX box. And uh, the thing that I did different, I guess, that I hadn't really done before that I ended up liking quite a bit was I used the delay, but rather than just using the delay, I used this little CV sequencer that it has where you can dial in some different voltage settings and it will run in a sequence. I routed that into the delay time. And so by changing the delay time just slightly, it gives a little bit of a pitch shift. And so it gives this uh, vibrato to the Privia that I like quite a bit. So take a listen. Okay, so this next clip, which was jam number 15, it sort of took me out of my comfort zone in terms of the video editing that I was doing. I originally recorded me sort of playing some chords on the accordion, and I recorded the sound into a uh, cassette tape, and so I added some sounds to synchronize the video to, and then I used the cassette signal through this pedal, which is the Audubit Junior from Maris. It's uh, doing some nice uh, filter sequencing and some stuttering. I thought it was a good effect on the accordion. So then that video I synchronized sort of at one level and then the other synchronization came through in that recording. Anyway, it was sort of different and uh, I thought it turned out pretty nice. So take a look. So for jam number 20, so that's January 20th, I decided to use the PO20. And uh, that's the Pocket Operator Arcade. Love this thing. It can do a lot of cool stuff. And uh, I decided to make a visual to go with it. So I used a language called Puzzle Script. And been kind of interested in this type of thing for a while and figured I would finally just try it out and do something. So I made a little kind of game snippet to um, go along with the arcade sounds. And, uh, you know, it was meant to be humorous because uh, if you've ever played, I think it's like Sakuban, Sakuban, something like that. It's a type of box pushing game and they're really easy to get stuck on where that you push something next to a wall or something like that and there's just no way to get around it to push it back up so 
uh, I had the uh, player get stuck first and have to reset. So uh, take a look. Now, the next one that I'm going to show was jam number 24, and I was using two Korg SQ1 sequencers to control the soft pop synth from Basil Instruments, and I sent that through the glitch delay in Ableton Live, so we did that after the fact, but I really liked how it turned out, but man, the, getting the levels right, it just almost seemed impossible, where that some of the peaks were so extreme, Nothing was really clipping, but it was just big dynamic range. Anytime I tried to compress it or filter it or limit it, it seemed worse to me. So I ended up just sort of going in and ducking some of the peaks in the video editing software. I guess that was about as good a compromise as I could come up with, but some of the kind of uh, interplay that happens when I change some of the uh, duty cycle parameters on the one of the SQ1s. Uh, it sounds almost sort of like a bluesy exchange. A couple of different voices there. Really liked how it turned out. So take a listen. <laughs> Okay, so the next one, which was jam number 28, in this one I used the organelle from Critter and Guitari to control the Volca samples. And the cool thing about this one is that I used some custom code that I wrote for the organelle, I think like two years ago. So it's a pure data patch that lets me play notes on the organelle and those, the, the MIDI note data gets converted to uh, CC pitch values. And so I can kind of play the Volca samples chromatically, which typically you can't using a MIDI controller. And so that's pretty cool. Throw in a sequence and uh, I thought that the result turned out pretty well. Check it out. Okay, so this last one, which was jam number 31, was sort of crazy. Um, I used this harpsicle, which I borrowed from a friend. I'm taking the audio from this by a contact mic, 
and using the field kit and field kit effects and uh, spring reverb and uh, this is the happiness filter pedal from Dwarfcraft devices and mix all of this up it was kind of a challenge because this thing is like always cycling and it's got a resonance associated with it the spring reverb has a feedback and then just some of the modes or resonances on the harp itself depending on where you have the mic put kind of made it to where that there were times if i even just brushed the wrong string that it would just sort of freak out and cause my field recorder to clip and so i did my best with it and uh, i think that uh, in some ways this is one of my favorites out of all of the month so check it out All right, so that's 10 clips from January, and uh, it's been 50 videos, and I really appreciate everybody watching, and thanks a lot for subscribing, and uh, I look forward to making more videos, and uh, hope that you guys enjoyed this one. I'm gonna close it out. He is not happy. I'm gonna close this one out with, uh, we had a lot of rain here recently, sort of a weird uh, gulf storm that was kind of a flood event locally. And uh, well, I went out with a field recorder and found some really cool water sounds. And so just gonna close this video out with that. All right, thanks a lot. See you in the next one.